with so many employment law changes coming in 2024, what does this mean for your employment policies, employee handbooks? What do you need to update? In this video, I will tell you all. My name is Jennifer, I'm the founder of Silk Helix. We work with businesses not only to keep you employment law compliant, but to help you get the best out of your people with the foundations of the right employment law. And we do this through HR advice, updating your policies, management training in person and for our digital courses. So let's get on with this. Let's talk about employment policies in 2024. What do we need to be thinking about? What do you need to update? I've got specific videos on the various bits of legislation that's being changed coming into force in 2024. So check out those videos for more details. But in this one, I'm just gonna run through what that really means for our policies. Now, I'm not a huge fan of policy for policy sake. We do a lot of work with smaller businesses where you'll have much less in the way of employment policies than say a really large corporate that needs to have everything in much more detailed terms because you're trying to get a lot more managers to comply with the same rules across a, a larger group of people. Whereas in a small business where that decision making is being done day to day by perhaps one person, perhaps it's a business owner is the only people manager or you've perhaps got a manager within the business, your need for employment policies are going to be much smaller. So it's really important that to start with, you've got policies that are right for your business, the nature of your business and what they really need to do for you. And there's not many policies that are actually legally required. So disciplinary grievance policies are legally required. You're, you have to issue those procedures to new starters alongside their employment contracts. Holiday, you are required to tell people what their entitlements are, how they book the holiday, when you can turn down the holiday. So effectively that makes holiday policy a legal requirement. And then there's some really useful ones like sickness and things like that that really should be in there. I've got other videos on the policies that you really need to have within your business. So what's changing in 2024? Well, there's a few things that might impact policies you've already got. So flexible working will be a first one. So we've got flexible working, the right to request flexible working is gonna become a day one right. Chances are if you've got a flexible working policy, it says that you have to have 26 weeks of service with effect from April this year, that will become a day one right. So important that you update your policy for that. And if you're a bigger organisation, make sure managers are aware so that they recognise the request coming in and that that's a valid request. If you've got family friendly policies, and I say if on both of these because you don't necessarily need them, now even if you're a small business, I would recommend that you do have these. Even if they're not in huge amounts of detail, these are the things that are important to your employees. So if they get pregnant or their partner gets pregnant or they want to adopt or they want to change their hours of work through flexible working, it's important that they know how to do that and that they can see that there's a sort of procedure. Now it doesn't have to be loads of detail in that, but just something that says, hey look, we recognise your employment rights and we're not going to take those away from you. We're going to treat you right as an employer. So I would recommend that you have these policies and your family friendly policies are things like your maternity. What happens if I get pregnant? When do I need to tell you? What do I need to tell you? If my partner gets pregnant, I want paternity leave. What do I need to tell you? All of those things should be in those policies. So that's what we're talking about when we say family friendly policies and carers leave comes into force as expected in April this year. I'd add a policy on that. I'd add a policy to outline what carers leave is, what the notice requirements are for it, and that you could possibly turn it down if you absolutely need to. Again, check out my video in detail on that one. Other employment law changes such as maternity and the protections around redundancy. If you're a smaller business, you're probably not gonna have that much detail in your maternity policy. So probably isn't an update there, it's just something to be aware of. If you're a big corporate, you're much more likely to have that sort of detail in, so you need to make sure that your policy is updated to reflect that one as well. A slightly more complex one is the ability to roll up holiday pay, a new piece of legislation coming in that says that actually we can roll up holiday pay, whereas the case law has very much been indicating that we can't roll up holiday pay or we shouldn't be doing it or only in very exceptional circumstances. This one could be a change in the way you do things. It could be a change to contractual ways of doing things as well, in which case you need to get agreement from employees. So that one, check out my video specifically on holiday pay for that one, because that is quite different in terms of, it's not just a case of updating the policy. We That's really gonna be about making business decisions, about whether or not you wanna make those changes, 
how you communicate those changes, whether you need to get agreements, those changes. There's a lot more to that one. So I'm gonna kind of skip over that one for this video and say check out in detail my video on holiday pay and implications around that. But finally, coming into force later on this year, is the duty to protect against sexual harassment on employers. Now, we're still waiting for real details on this one because as I say, it is later on this year in terms of what that duty to protect really means, what the expectations on employers is going to be. We are expecting sort of guidance notes to, to come inside that, but it is expected that we will see a requirement for employers to have a policy around sexual harassment, how you report sexual harassment, recognizing what sexual harassment is, and then importantly, that we provide training to employees on those things as well so people recognize what it is recognize what to do if they witness it recognize how to report it managers recognize what it means when they get a report how they investigate it how you have a culture that ensures that sexual harassment just won't be accepted in your work environment so that was later on this year i think around october we're expecting that one to come into force so something to keep an eye out for and likely to be a policy change but again more than just a policy change. I think it's gonna be really important that we put training and things in place for that. So do keep an eye out because we will be putting more videos out on that. Clearly, along with all the other policies, updating your policies, providing you with new policies, starting from scratch if you haven't already got them, is something that we can do for you. We will also be putting together training around sexual harassment and ensuring that that training is compliant with that duty to prevent sexual harassment. We'll be looking at both digital training and in-person training for that. So again, keep an eye on that. In the meantime, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. You can also uh, sign up to our email mailing list so you keep up to date on all the employment law changes as they happen.